This is Hair Without Coke and welcome to another Path of Exiles video. Affliction patch notes were released yesterday and in my opinion, it is the largest and best Path of Exile update in a while. The patch notes are long but I'm going to talk about the things that stand out to me. There's a lot of predictions about Affliction before the patch notes were released. But none of us expected that there would be new ascendancies in Affliction League. Honestly, when I saw the trailer, I was shocked, but in a good way. Affliction is an in-map mechanic. Unlike Trial of the Ancestors or Heist, you don't have to leave the map and enter a completely different area just to do the mechanics. When mapping, you will encounter sacred whispers that allow you to be transferred to a place called Viridian Wild Wood. You will be able to explore the woods and find new valuable rewards, new powers and even new bosses. Then here comes the most exciting part about Affliction League, the three new ascendancies, which you can choose from in addition to the regular ascendancies. The first ascendancy is called the Warden of the Magi. This ascendancy specializes in flask and tinctures, while also providing some forms of defense through the skill bark skin and the ascendancy notable Oath of the Magi. The second ascendancy, the Warlock of the Mist, allows you to manipulate corpses to gain more damage and protection against monsters that share a creature tab with the corpse. Besides having access to the three new curses, you can also buy corpses from the NPC and summon them as specters. This ascendancy class should be good for minion builds and aura bots. The last one is called the Wildwood Primalist. This one is very interesting because you can purchase charms from the NPC to create your own ascendancy class. This ascendancy class has very high potential. Imagine we can purchase some very powerful charms from the NPC. This ascendancy class can be very insane. I think most players are going to select this ascendancy class during league start. When the sacred whispers run out of energy, they return you to where you came from, along with any other whispers you collected. These whispers then disperse into the environment and inhabit randomly chosen monsters in the area, increasing their power and also their rewards. Affliction feels like a sentinel integrated into the lore of Harvest, but I'm not complaining because I like both mechanics. Now let's talk about the buffs and the nerfs. I will start with the skill jumps that are buffed. Divine Eye has its damage massively buffed. It now has a maximum of 10 stages instead of 20, while also gaining significantly more damage with hits and ailments per stage after the first. I played self-cast Divine Eye before, but the channeling playstyle felt clunky. However, Divine Eye Totem should be very good. Totems automatically release the beam once they hit max stages. Given the maximum stages is now 10, the beams can be released faster. Cobra Lash got massive buff for both the clear speed and the single target due to the extra chains. I think this will be a popular league starter. Animate Guardian now has more minion maximum life. Huge buff because some Animate Guardians are very expensive to set up and the last thing you want is for them to die. Besides Animate Guardian, there are a lot of minions which now have more life. For example, Summon Carrion Golem, Summon Fire Golem and Summon Reaper. Rolling Magma now gains plus 2 chains at 20% quality. Someone might be able to come up with some crazy and fun rolling magma builds with this change. Something like using Sire of Shards to clear the whole screen will be very fun. Lastly, Arc got buffed. 15% more damage with hits and ailments just means that Ignite Arc should be quite good next league. Moving on to the skill gem nerfs, we have Righteous Fire gutted at endgame. Righteous Fire should perform better during campaign but you will soon hit a wall when you reach maps. This is because the base fire damage has been removed from the skill jump. So now you can only skill the life and energy shield to get the same amount of damage. To do this, you will have to sacrifice things like damage on gears, which is not ideal. 
Also, stacking life means that you will not be able to skill fire trap, which is a huge damage loss in single target. Some people might be able to come up with righteous fire builds using a rough beef globe, but I think the budget is going to be much higher. Vortex, which is another popular league starter, got nerfed as well. It is no longer instant, and its damage has been significantly lowered at jump level 20. Lastly, the purity ores no longer provide increased AoE at 20% quality, which is a nerf to the minion builds. However, if you are using them on yourself, this change is considered a buff. What's Path of Exile if there's no nerfs? This time, the nerf hammer finally hit some very popular unique items. For example, Hit Shiver and Calm Spirit. I mean, these are expected. A lot of people thought that Hit Shiver would be nerfed in Draft the Ancestors, but surprisingly, it survived. But now, the time has finally come for it to be nerfed. Hit Shiver now only allows you to gain 30% instead of 100% of cold damage as extra fire damage against frozen enemies, which obviously is a huge damage loss. This is going to affect builds like Frost Blades, Ice Trap, and Cold Shock with Totem. My version of Cold Shock with Totem survived though since it doesn't use Hit Shiver or Replica Dragon Fang's Flight. As for Calm Spirit, you will now regenerate 1 range per second for every 300 life recovery, instead of 100 life recovery per second from regeneration. This is going to affect a lot of builds. Mainly attack builds like Frost Blades, like a Strike and Tornado Shot. However, this new change can be overcome easily if you have very high life regeneration. For example, if you are playing an Inquisitor or a Guardian. In Affliction League, alternate quality gems, helmet enchantments, and unique treasure jewels will be combined into a new system called Transfigured Gems, which are alternative versions of existing skill gems that have different functionality and balance. The new Transfigured Gems offer so much potential for cooking up entirely new builds. For example, Raise Zombie of Falling. Instead of raising zombies from the ground, you can now raise zombies from the sky. Imagine you can have rain of zombies, how fun would that be? I will definitely play this if I can get my hands on this. We will be getting over a hundred transfigured gems and I can't wait to find out their interactions with the monsters. I'm all for build diversity. I'm happy that after so many leaks, we are finally getting what we wanted, which is the meta shakeup. We don't have a list of transfigured gems yet, and a lot of people are kind of on the fence about what to leak start with. However, I think it will be fun to try out new stuff with all these transfigured gems introduced. Also, all the skill gem nerfs we receive might be turned into buffs with transfigured gems, but we will only know when the details are out. Another thing is that Ultimatum is back. Honestly, this feels like early Christmas. There are so many things to anticipate and be excited about. I think a lot of people will farm this instead of other mechanics that they normally do because it is very rewarding. With Ultimatum replacing Metamorph, we also get Atlas passive specific to Ultimatum, which is a good thing. I'm happy to see Metamorph gone actually. I did a task farming Metamorph just before the patch notes were released. Metamorph being one of the extra contents felt underwhelming. I don't know if it's going to be gone forever, or maybe it may return someday, but I hope that when it returns, it's in a better state than it was. That's the reason why it is so unpopular. It all comes down to the rewards. There's no reason to farm Metamorph the way it is when we have other mechanics like Harvest and Expedition. Before I conclude this video, I would like to mention that the gem cutter's recipe for skill gems has been removed, which means that now you have to pick up all quality gems and vendor them to get gem cutter's prism at early game. Also, we will probably see a price increase for gem cutter's prism in Affliction, and less 20% quality skill gems in the market during league start. However, please note that this change does not affect non-awakened support gems. Alright, hopefully I covered everything important. 
Honestly, these patch notes are very heavy and there's a lot to digest. However, I'm happy that there will be a meta shift and we will get to try different builds instead of the usual ones. Hopefully, the transfigured gems and new ascendancies live up to their name and contribute to build diversity. I'm not sure what I'm going to lick start with yet, but I'll keep you updated. That's it. If you enjoy my content, please hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. Thank you and see you next time.